Hello everyone, this is Jen Boyd with Elements of Harmony Feng Shui, and today I've got a very special client. Her name is Leisha Snyder, and we actually had the opportunity to work together a few years ago in, um, in her house in Immigration Canyon, and through the success of Feng Shui in that house, they were able to then purchase a second home in Park City. So we're gonna be talking about her experience with Feng Shui, and Lisa, thank you so much for being here this morning. Jen, thank you for inviting me. This is really fun. I love visiting with you and I'm just excited to have this conversation. Oh, great, great, great. Well, you have a really feng shui, uh, really fun feng shui story. So let's get started. So I'm curious, you know, what was your life, your life like before you started doing feng shui and before you, you know, before you joined the Harmony Blueprint uh, program? Well, it's been a phenomenal year in so many ways and I, I think everybody could agree that with COVID-19 uh, it, it has brought so many surprises to our lives that nobody could have expected. We were actually in the process uh, we had bought a place in Park City that was a fixer and we were in the process of completing a remodel of it and had recently moved in and about the same time I learned about your Harmony program and thought that seems like it's just about the right thing for us um, because this move for us really represented a big change and we had some significant intentions in mind around how we wanted to experience life in our new nest and in our new community and jen after you know having worked with you in the past we knew that being intentional about our living space would be a game changer for example, after we worked together last time, I started a business. Mm -hmm. uh, we increased our family income and our savings, and we achieved goals that we had been imagining for a long time. Wow. So for our new home in a new community and a new school for our son, we wanted to focus on creating a space to support how we want to experience life together. And the truth is we're usually really social and we love to entertain. Um, we're active, we, lo we like to travel and enjoy recreation of every kind. And at the same time, as we're imagining all of these uh, fun ways that we enjoy living, I was realizing that I needed to figure out how to scale my business for smart growth. And my husband, Steve, had been looking at a possible career change. And to be Fully honest, our son Logan wasn't exactly thrilled about moving away from the home we built when he was a baby. There's just so many memories there. And the prospect of a new community and making new friends and a new school didn't feel great to him. Um, and so we were in this headspace of wanting to create what we started to call our, our base camp. And we, wanted, we just wanted it to be this beautiful, welcoming, easy to maintain nest that would give us more time to be with our local family members, me more time to shape my growing business and my family more time and greater ease in getting out to play and experience life. I love all of that. So, so what do you feel like, what was kind of the process? So it sounds like you guys were renovating the second house and you really had some very specific goals around and intentions around how you wanted to live your life, how you wanted to grow your business, how you wanted to exist as a family, right? Yeah, exactly. How you wanted to feel in your home so that, you know, I know that you're really sensitive to energy and you believe in how you feel really exudes out into the world. That is so true, Jen. And Kat, because we had worked together when i learned that you were giving a class that would take us into even a deeper dive yeah. um steve and i decided it would be fun to sign up to, for your class together and yeah. I, we felt like it was important that we all learn about creating our space together and be yeah. on the same page about it rather than one of us taking that on as as a task but creating this fun process and that's exactly how it was so the process of the um yeah. harmony blueprint was fun for us mm -hmm. 
we would come home from work on Tuesdays and join your class from our laptop in the kitchen mm -hmm. while we we're cooking dinner. And, you know, during that time, our kitchen wasn't done and we didn't really have countertops. It was great fun. It gave us a way to begin to envision how the space was going to just not just look, but feel and how it would work in our lives. Um, we would, one of us would be cooking and the other might be taking notes. And it was a really fun uh, evening together that we would, looked forward to every week for about six weeks. And then you provided weekly assignments and it gave us a chance to think about and also write out uh, our intentions and begin to really imagine our space and the multiple spaces in our home and how the five elements and the feng shui principles that we were beginning to integrate would be applied yep. and then we had lots of time and um, we still are implementing um to to begin to say to ourselves well how would this work and where would we put that and what element does that represent and how does that balance and so we looked at our whole space and we looked at every single room and began to implement during that process. And I, the way I think about it is it's an ongoing, not a one and done. Um, once we began to understand how Feng Shui works, then those tools were like in our toolkit, right? And we're still using those tools to fine tune our space and right now we're actually working on our office spaces so nice. we're using the bagua and the five element principles in our home office spaces and in our business offices and in fact today after we wrap up i'm going to be moving my um salt lake office up to park city and uh, begin applying the principles to that office space that's awesome. And then do you feel like feng shui, because you had talked about how you felt like feng shui really helped you grow your prosperity and your business. So what would be maybe a couple examples of that? Holy cow. So yeah, absolutely. And I, I see that it's a science. I, I see feng shui as a science, but it's also about integrating intention with the science of feng shui and so a couple of examples i mean there are many but i'll just give you like one right off the bat was financially speaking we looked into refinancing our mortgage the late summer early fall thinking you know rates are really low i wonder what we could do and we ended up reducing our monthly payment by 350 dollars a month and then we were shocked when the appraisal came in at $100,000 over what we had paid for her, our home just eight months prior. So, so that was that was a surprise, um, a welcome surprise. And um, you know, the other area would be with my business. Um, remember, one intention I had was to figure out how would I, how can I scale my business for growth? Mm -hmm. And I was looking really under every rock of, of my practice um, and asking the question, how can I scale my business? And as soon as I asked the question, the answers started to appear. I was accepted into an executive coaching program sponsored by my brokerage firm. And through that process, I've been able to clarify who my target market is, what I do best, where I need to leverage other people's skills, and I've identified what I want my life to be like in relationship with my business. And that, that happens, I think, out of simply being intentional, um, and Feng Shui is one of those, um, it's a framework, if you will, for being intentional. Yep. Yeah, it's kind of like those guidelines that if you follow, it just helps you figure out I love it because it helps me always remember like the nine areas of life. So, you know, you're covering everything within exactly. your, you know, and it just gives you a way to kind of figure out, okay, where is everything going to go? How is it going to fit? What are my main intentions for right now? Exactly. Yeah. And, I, and it's, it's a, a toolkit that we now have that we can yep. use when we want to. Um, and, and just to expand on, I mean, there's the, 
there are the the abundance and prosperity aspects that are wonderful measures or outcomes if you will but that's not the only thing that's important to us it, it's it's just a great way to measure that things are happening um i would say more importantly in many ways is that we love our space we love coming home which is a good thing because we're at home a lot these days um, exactly and we, and we're experiencing the ease that we were envisioning and having some fun together creating recreating and planning what we want to create next and we have more time now to enjoy being with each other and our local family members and that was part of our our goal um i, I also want to say that our son ha is adjusting he's taking initiative several times a week all on his own to get out and go to local bike parks and uh, during the summer he would ride to grandma and grandpa's house and uh, he's also brought his grades up to almost straight a's and so you know awesome. to me that speaks to some harmony that we're creating here together. Yeah, sounds really good. Sounds like your energy has really come together. So um, what do you feel like, um, so it sounds like your life now, once you implemented Feng Shui and took the Harmony Blueprint, do you want to talk, I mean, you kind of touched on it, but is there anything else you wanted to share about how your life is like now? Sure, yeah, absolutely. Um, Steve and I are pretty creative people. Uh, we're musical and, and we we wanted to have the space be a creative wellspring for us we know that when we are creative we get new ideas and fresh ideas and 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 life has more energy and so here, here's an example uh even though we're social distancing for health and safety when the weather was warmer than it is now our yard was a really welcome space because we, we applied feng shui to our entire space not just the inside space and became a welcome space for our musical community to gather and play outside and jam and and neighbors and friends would stop by with their lawn chairs their beverage and enjoy a saturday afternoon of live music and so um you know the creative aspects of our lives that we're nurturing are are alive here and that's just one example um i would say uh, that base camp vision that we really wanted to create is alive and well we've set ourselves up to easily take off for a long weekend to go play in the desert we like to go canyoneering and mountain biking and the ease part of it is that it's easy to go and it's easy to come back and re-enter without it taking a week to kind of recover from being gone and that's really that's really nice um what so is, what is it about the house that makes it easier for you to come back after being gone just the way we've set it up i mean we we were very intentional to i mean if you see our garage it, it looks like um it looks like a gear store I mean, but it's set up very intentionally to kind of grab and go. You know, grab the gear you want to go out and play with and go. We we work hard and we play hard and we want to take advantage of this beautiful place we live here in Utah. And and we've got the gear to do it, whether it's skis or mountain bikes or what have you. And it's just set up to be easy. Um, and that was part of the process for us. We were very intentional about, um, we just want it to be, um, you know, if we get a wild hair and say, we're gonna head out tonight, we're gonna throw some things in our rig and go. And it's just like that. Um, so now, because that's been so easy, we're starting to make travel plans for 2020.